Welcome to another pen talk. Today we're going to do something a little different. When I started my uh, videos up, uh, uploading to YouTube on uh, fountain pens, I did them in respect to a lot of the other reviewers on YouTube. You know, Mr. Brown, the Goulet's, Pen Hal, Pen Habit. There's, there's a number of people, and I think those of us who enjoy fountain pens and enjoy looking at other pens from other people, that's, that's a very nice thing. And we all encourage everybody to be creative and upload and add their own information to the community. So what I've uh, thought about is um, a way of encouraging my viewers to be more active, participate, and I think the best way uh, to encourage people is to provide a reward, you know, something physical. So what you see before you are a number of pens. They all happen to be from um, Asian manufacturers. And I'm going to be offering these pens as um, a prize. The uh, first prize will go to the person who has the first comment on this video. That's a nice easy one to do. Uh, they get their first choice of any of these pens. The uh, second and third prize winners will be those who comment. And what I would um, like to see is uh, what you like about my pen videos and especially what you would suggest to improve the videos to make them um, more satisfying to use the viewer. Um, that would be great. So before we um, get to that point, let me just describe the pens that we have here. These are the Jinhao 599s in solid uh, plastic. I've not done a review on that particular Jinhao 599. I have done a review on the transparent ones. Uh, you have your blue, kind of orangish, kind of grayish black, and green. We also have three of the metal Jinhaos. And uh, well, the ones I have left are red, kind of like a gold and a black. We have a series of Pilot Petite Ones in various colors. And if you select the Pilot Petite One, I will also supply you with a tube of uh, three more cartridges in the, in the color of the pen. If you want to experiment with um, using the pen as an eyedropper fill, I will give you a sample of ink. I have a large variety, so um, we'll figure out something and some silicone grease to uh, seal the barrel with. Hopefully this is of interest and what would be nice is if uh, the winners of these pens would feel motivated, maybe upload their own video. Um, one of the things that makes YouTube to me such a, a unique uh, experience is I first got involved with YouTube uh, a number of years ago when um, the washing machine broke. It's a um, you know, standard Sears washing machine. We've had it for a while. Uh, it worked fine until it broke. Just uh, the tub wouldn't, wouldn't move. So I jumped on the internet and, and did a search on the washing machine and found that there was YouTube videos on how to fix it. And I thought that was great. And there were a number of videos and they were quite detailed. And with uh, the instructions from the videos, I was able to order the part and for 20 bucks fix the washing machine. So uh, that got me started on YouTube and when I started seeing fountain pen videos and other videos it just really motivated me to get involved. So that's the, the offer so to speak. So we'll, we'll see how um, the audience responds. To make the video um, still kind of germane to fountain pens and to add a little bit more interest to it. I thought we might look at my daily carries of the moment. I love these little Nook 
three pen cases. I have a number of them. Uh, they work very, very well. I use these um, in my uh, briefcase. We have three pens. You may recognize two of them if uh, you've watched some of my earlier videos. This is the Conklin with a glider point. The Delta Dolce Vite Zen. And this is a new one, which I haven't done a video on. It's a Swan Eternal Loverless Fill. And one of the other um, great video bloggers on YouTube, Gran Mia, um, when I found this pen in my collection, and I think I may have bought it when I was in, in, in the UK, I'm not certain. But I was concerned about how to fix it, and with his video and showing what he did to fix pretty much almost the same pen, I felt motivated to lend my repair skills and this pen was restored. I like it because it has a somewhat of an oblique stub nib to it. Uh, one of the future videos I hope to do is a um, collection of my pens that have kind of oblique nibs. I have one official oblique nib on my uh, Franklin Christoph 19. So one of the things about Daily Writers is this, this pen has been a, an unbelievable daily performer. It always writes the first time. I have Yoroshuku ink in it, which I think uh, helps that writing. Uh, the nib is just really semi-soft, and I just love the way that feels on a, on a paper. It's not really that flexible, which when you're doing a lot of writing, I think a nib like this is easier to write with over a long period of time. A wet noodle becomes difficult because uh, with very little pressure the variations of the uh, line is going to change quite easily and that gives you, you need to have that more fine motor control which uh, in my case is something that lends to, to be tired. For the past couple weeks since I got it I've been using this for my primary writing day to day. As I've mentioned before, I may write a number of pages of notes. The pen, aesthetically, I think looks very, very good. The dimensions, because it is an elongated cap, and it kind of tapers a lot at both ends. I wouldn't say that's great, but it's functionally perfect. The other thing I found about this pen, and as you can see, it posts very deeply, is that this is a different type of section because it kind of is reduced in, in size. The uh, diameter goes down as it gets towards the end. There's no lip at the end. So this is not a typical section, but I found it to be extremely comfortable because I basically can hold it anywhere and I can write with it. And I'm not one of those people that generally hold the pen away from the nib. I generally hold it fairly close to the nib. And this also, I always do Delta with a big E. This pen also writes very well. Now, I had a little bit of a challenge with this. I first had in Noodler's uh, Black Swan, I think it was Aust Australian Rose, and it would skip a little bit. And it would, after a period of writing, it would stop writing. Um, I wasn't quite sure why, because, um, you know, I think these pens are extremely well made. So I changed the ink to uh, J. Urban uh, Purple. It's not really purple, it's a De Lune. And since I've changed to that ink, and this is my first real experience with J. Urban, my only bottle of it, it's written, it's written perfectly since then. Always writes the first time, consistent flow. So I love Noodler's inks. I've heard some people have their concerns about Noodler's inks, but so now I've found a pen. And I think maybe all the Delta Feeds may uh, respond to that because I have uh, turquoise in my uh, Capri. And that also seems to dry out and skip. So when the, that fill is empty, I will probably go to an Irishuku ink to uh, fill it out. So last but not least is the uh, Swan Eternal. Interesting how the top of it has this exposed screw. There may have been some other top on here that had broke. This pen is fairly old, probably from the mid-30s. As you can see, the rings don't stay in their groove here at the bottom of the cap. But what's always interesting is there's no 
lever in it. Hopefully we can uh, bring out the writing here that's in the uh, on the barrel. And this top of the cap, and there's the, there's the number. Swan identifies their pens with a number. Gee, so does Delta. This knob here turns. You turn it counterclockwise and there's a, a bar that extends down from this knob and that bar twists and compresses the rubber sack inside. You could do that before or um, you know, or during your insertion of the section into the ink. You see the bubbles come out and then you turn it clockwise and reseat it and that lets the bladder expand and the ink uh, the pen gets filled with ink. I don't know how well um, you'll be able to see the nib here. The lighting's not the best this, this evening. But it is kind of a, a stubby, there we go, a stubby and it's kind of at an angle. Uh, it's a kind of soft nib, kind of soft like uh, the uh, Conklin. It fits well in the hand without posting. And in this one I have Aurora Blue. Um, I used to use a lot of Aurora ink um, a while ago and I've found the old bottles and have um, started using them. It's an excellent blue and the flow is very good. You might hear the, the nib on the paper. Uh, it, you know, it has a decent amount of variation to it. But, you know, the horizontal lines are fairly thin and the vertical lines are, you know, three to four times the thickness. It lays down a decent amount of ink. So, hope you found this interesting. Uh, I look forward to reading your comments. And I look forward to providing some of you with some writing instruments. So, keep in touch, keep writing on, and may all your writing experiences be pleasant.